Hello STEMers, welcome back. This week is going to be a lot of fun. We are going to be making bird feeders. And so we're going to start off the video showing a recipe that we found that uses gelatin instead of peanut butter, just in case anyone out there has a peanut allergy. This one is safe. So we're going to start off with that recipe. And if you miss any steps in this recipe, there's a link to the website that we used in the description below. And then following that recipe, we're going to have some pictures for some other ideas that you can use for bird feeders using containers that you probably have lying around your house. And then we're going to jump over to Mary reading our story for the week. And we're gonna close out the video showing a few pictures of some birds that are living in our area so you can go out and try and find these birds and hopefully we'll attract a couple of them with our feeders this week. So I hope you guys enjoy it and um, like I said there's a link in the description below to the first recipe. There's also a link to another website that shows some other bird feeder activities and the third link that we have is for a second story. So I hope you guys enjoy the video this week. And as always, if you know anybody who's interested in joining along with the program, please get a hold of Lynette at the El Rito Library. And thank you all so much for participating. It means so much that we still get to keep this program going for you all. So I hope you have a great week and we'll see you next time. Owl Moon by Jane Yoland, illustrated by John Schoner. It was late one winter night, long past my bedtime, when Pa and I went owling. There was no wind, the trees stood still as giant statues, and the moon was so bright the sky seemed to shine. Somewhere behind us a train whistle blew, long and low, like a sad, sad song. I could hear it through the woolen cap Pa had pulled down over my ears. A farm dog answered the train, then a second dog joined in. They sang out trains and dogs for a real long time. When their voices faded away, it was as quiet as a dream. We walked toward the woods, Pa and I. Our feet crunched over the crisp snow, and little gray footprints followed us. Pa made a long shadow, but mine was short and round. I had to run after him every now and then to keep up, and my short, round shadow bumped after me. But I never called out. If you go owling, you have to be quiet. That's what Pa always said. I've been waiting to go owling with Pa for a long, long time. 
We reached the line of pine trees, black and pointy against the sky, and Pa held up his hand. I stopped right where I was and waited. He looked up as if searching the stars, as if reading a map up there. The moon made his face into a silver mask. Then he called, hoo, 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 the sound of a great horned owl. Hoo, 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 hoo. Again he called out, and then again, and after each call he was silent. And for a moment we both listened, but there was no answer. Pa shrugged and I shrugged. I was not disappointed. My brother Saul said, sometimes there's an owl and sometimes there isn't. We walked on. I could feel the cold as if someone's icy hand was palmed down on my back and my nose and the tops of my cheeks felt cold and hot at the same time. But I never said a word. If you go owling, you have to be quiet and make your own heat. We went into the woods. The shadows were the blackest things I had ever seen. They stained the white snow my mouth felt furry for the scarf over it was wet and warm. I didn't ask what kinds of things hide behind black trees in the middle of the night. When you go owling, you have to be brave. Then we came to a clearing in the dark woods. The moon was high above us. It seemed to fit exactly over the center of the clearing and the snow below it was whiter than the milk in a cereal bowl. I sighed and Pa held up his hand at the sound. I put my mittens over the scarf over my mouth and listened hard. And then Pa called, and looked so hard my ears hurt and my eyes got cloudy with the cold. Pa raised his face to call out again, but before he could open his mouth, an echo came threading its way through the trees. Hoo, 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 hoo. Pa almost smiled. Then he called back, hoo, 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 just as if the owl and he were talking about supper or about the woods or the moon or the cold. I took my mitten off the scarf off my mouth and I almost smiled too. The owl's call came closer from high up in the trees on the edge of the meadow. Nothing in the meadow moved. All of a sudden, an owl shadow, part of the big tree shadow, lifted off and flew right over us. We watched silently with heat in our mouths and heat, the heat of all those words we had not spoken. The shadow hooted again. Pa turned on his big flashlight and caught the owl just as it was landing on a branch. For one minute, three minutes, maybe even a hundred minutes, we stared at one another. Then the owl pumped its great wings and lifted off the branch like a shadow without sound. It flew back into the forest. Time to go home, Pa said to me. I knew then I could talk. I could even laugh out loud. But I was a shadow as we walked home.
When you go owling, you don't need words or warm or anything but hope. That's what Pa says. The kind of hope that flies on silent wings under a shining owl moon.